Hey, this is Michael Zwick. I'm with my new friend, Pastor Dwayne Hennon. And uh, he can hear me, but he can't see me. Right. Um, right. And so it's actually funny. We were talking about this right before the interview. And Dwayne, you're out of Ohio, is that right? Yes, correct. Warren, Ohio. Warren, and you, you're a pastor of what church? Restoration Bible Church. Restoration Bible Church. And you kind of grew up in the church, is that right? Yes, correct. W what happened? Well, you know, I grew up in a Baptist church. I went to Christian and Missionary Alliance in, uh, by about middle school. I just felt like, hey, there's a lot of things they're not teaching that they're saying isn't real. So the whole thing must not be real. So I just kind of walked away from it, um, ran after the world, and um, found myself wanting all the time. Well, well, it's interesting you say that because we're at a deliverance conference yes, right now, yes. and you said you were raised Baptist. I was raised Baptist. The guy behind the camera was raised Baptist. Oh, there you go. So uh, we, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of conversions in here. I think yeah, Sandy yeah. was Episcopalian, so we've got you know. But but what you're saying is, is you said there were some things that you were told wasn't true. What do you mean exactly? Okay, so I was always told that you get to like First Corinthians, um, you know, chapter thirteen. Mm -hmm. And it starts to talk about tongues and prophecy and words of knowledge that none of that existed now. And I read the passage for what it said, and it doesn't say that. It says, you know, it'll cease, but it's talking future sense. Yeah. When, when you're face to face. And I'm thinking, well, listen, I'm not face to face with Jesus right now. Right. I'm not face to face with him. So what they're telling me is that if this part is not true, then how can I believe the rest of it? Wow. You know, if, if everything he did, and he says you'll do even greater things, if that's not true, what do I have to base what I need to do here on? Yeah, it's so cool that you said that because I was talking to Pastor Greg Locke yesterday, yes. and he said I was an independent Baptist preacher. He said, but the problem was, is he said that I was an expository preacher. So I would go through the Bible line by line. Yes. And he said, I knew that this was the Word of God and it was the truth, and he said I couldn't get past that. Yep. If it's in the Bible, it's got to be true. So you walked away for a little bit, yes. and then you started a job. Is that right? Yes, I when I got out, well, I you know to kind of back forward, like when I first got out of call, uh, high school, I graduated when I was seventeen. Mm -hmm. um, my parents made a deal because they knew I was heading the wrong direction. Okay, they said if you go to a Christian college, we'll pay for it. Okay, I, I went to um, Cedarville College down in uh, Cedarville, Ohio, um, Baptist, very yeah. very Baptist, yeah. and um, didn't last long because I, I I didn't like the rules, so walked away from that. Started getting into my own businesses. Um, ended up having my own flooring installation business. And when I got that, I was just always busy. That's all I did. Was that's all I knew was work. Uh -huh. Make make the money. Make the money. You know that's what drove me. Make the money. Go out afterwards. Relieve the pain. You know. So you know, it was just a life of partying. It was a life of just um, you know running after the dollar until yeah. you know it's like 1999. I was doing a big job on a Saturday. Uh, my helpers all called off because it was Saturday. They yeah. were still hungover. Yeah. And it's like, so I'm like, well, I've got a contract. I've got to finish it. I had the leg press a 1,200 pound roll of carpet out the back of the van. And when I did that, it was like, you know, just thousands upon thousands of floaters. And so I knew something happened, but I thought, no big deal. Uh, you know, I'm young and dumb and tough. So yeah. went on vacation the next day with my daughter, who was six. Drove um, about an hour and a half away. Uh -huh. uh, we were right by the Clarion River at a cabin there, and uh, she was playing by the river, and all of a sudden everything went black. Oh my gosh. So I called her up there. My parents were coming, so, you know, and, uh, you know, the rest is kind of history. It started to change in me that, I, you know, really made me angry at God, you know, but um, I said, you know what, if, if God's real, then why would he do this? Okay. And I wrestled with him, and he won. Okay. <laughs> he won. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. He, he always gets his man, you know, or he always gets his woman. So, you know, it's like he, he'll win, but at some point you got to submit to him to do that. Amen. And so it says in Romans 8, 28, it says that we know that all things work together for good yes. to those who love God and for them who are called according to yes. his purpose. Yes. Even God allowing you to become blind so that you could yes. find your salvation. Yes, a absolutely. And, and, you know, it's like, I, I think it's like, uh, you know, I look at it sometimes a little differently. Yeah, he allowed it, but a lot of it was me that caused it. Yeah. You know, so, so you know, um, 
I still deal with the consequences of it. But his grace is so great. Um, I was totally blind for about three years where everything was black. Mm -hmm. And then I started seeing a little bit. And the doctor said, there's no hope. You're not going to see anything. This is how you are. And I started seeing light. And it's like, now I can see, you know, it's like, uh, you know, things that are up on the wall. I couldn't, I can't really tell you what everything is. Yeah. Um, I see shadows of people rather than the person. Sure. Um, you know, it, it, a little bit darker out there, you know, in the tent, a little bit you know, with the lighting, it's a little different. You get in the bright light of the sun, I, I just kind of go blind. Uh, but I've learned to adapt. But in the midst of it all, the spiritual vision that I have. Yeah. You know, I've had, I have people tell me all the time, your, your vision is so great. It's because it's his vision. It's not my vision. That's it. And so you said you went blind, but it actually took you almost dying. Yes. What happened? I, uh, I, when I first went blind, I just kind of shook my fist at God and, I, yeah, and, and I told him, if that was your plan A, then what was your plan B? You should run it by me. <laughs> right. And I, that's just how I talked to him. And I was angry. So I, I just um, allowed bitterness to really get in me. And that bitterness, it overtook me. Within two weeks of, of, of just fighting with him over that, I, my stomach shut down. And so I went to all of September, October, November, December of um, 1999 without being able to eat. The only thing I was able to get in was water, and even that sat in my stomach, just made me feel full. Yeah. Test after test after test, I couldn't figure anything out. Um, I was put in a university hospital up in Cleveland, yeah. and January 2nd of 2000, a doctor came in the room, and you know, he, he came over to me at my bedside, and he says, um, he said, sir, he says, um, if you have anything, you need to get an order. You need to get an order, he says, because at the best, you got a couple days left. Wow. And I was like, you know, I was young, six-year-old daughter, and I thought, well, this isn't what I, I how I saw my life ending. Right. You know, I, I lived, it, I lived a life, you know, where it's like, you know, um, I was a tough guy at the time. Yeah. I think while well, all all the guys are right at that right. age, so I, I was just like, you know, I, I didn't think any, I was invincible. Nothing could happen. Right. And you know, when I was laying there, and I began to just weep before the Lord, I fell asleep weeping. Because I was just, and I told him, I said, look, I said, whether it's five minutes or 50 years, I just want to be right with you. That's right. You know, that's all I want. I just want to be right with you. Because if I'm not right, I, I, look, I knew where I was going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I knew enough about the book to tell, you know, the right. Bible tells us, you know, and I knew enough that it was implanted in me that I knew it. And it's like all of a sudden it became a reality. Yeah. And that just took, switched the whole gears. I mean, that key turned on. And I tell you what, I went to sleep just weeping before the Lord. Um, woke up, it was, you know, dark in the room, everything was dark, I couldn't see anyways, and it's like, it was, you know, early in the morning, I heard this noise. I didn't know if it was a demon, I didn't know what it was. I thought, you know, this could be like a death angel or something, come and drag me away. Mm -hmm. I, it woke me up and it just scared me to death. And I just sat there, just kind of froze me, and my arms by my side, and I froze, I'm like, it's coming for me. Yeah. And I just listened, kept listening, heard it again. It was my stomach growling. <laughs> okay. Hadn't done that in four months. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm like, well, that's that's strange. Yeah. You know, I, I had a pick line, a pick line right here in my arm that, uh, you know, was, was giving me nutrients. And I'm like, well, that's, right. you know, that my stomach would just kick on. They've, they've tried every kind of medicine. I was on 23 different medicines to try to get me fixed mm -hmm. and nothing was working. Uh, you know, I went through like electric shock therapy. I went through all these different things that they were doing, you know, where they strap you on the table and they hit your ankle with a taser just to read all the nerves because really, they have the probes in you. You know, like not, they couldn't figure anything out. But God already knew. Mm. And, you know, so when, when I, you know, had that happen, I ordered, a, I said, I called the nurse and I said, hey, give me a breakfast tray. Yeah. And I kept eating and eating. Yeah. Within a day's time, I would regained 11 pounds. Praise God. And uh, the doctor said, well, that's not right. Go, go get a new scale. And they, they measured again, 11 pounds. And he just scratched his head, went out, um, released me from the hospital a week later. I went home. A month later, I was back in his office. And he was um, just saying, he said, so how are you doing? He said, how, how's all the medicines working? And I said, medicines? <laughs> I said, I'm not taking any medicines. Yeah. I quit taking them. I just quit them all to cold turkey. Yeah. He said, well, you can't do that. Your heart will stop. And I'm like, well, my heart didn't stop, and I, and I I'm still here. Yeah. And so he, he just, um, just kind of scratched his head, and he says, well, you think you need that pick line? I said, no. So we took that out, and um, 
I mean, I've been good since with that. But I, I sat there and he asked me, he says, what changed? Yeah. I said, well, that Jesus came in the room. <laughs> That's it. Jesus came in the room. That's what changes it right there. So, you know, you know, I, and then I was introduced to the deliverance of back in 2001 by a guy that came out from John Kilpatrick. Okay. Um, up from the Brownsville Revival. Um, young youth pastor. Man, this kid was on fire. Still friends to this day. Mm -hmm. Just on fire. He said, hey, I want to come over. And I said, a new thing. He want to try it out. He yeah, said, yeah. He said, so I'll take you through some things. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you know, a lot of people knew my past. So they started, he started going through. And you know what? You could feel a lot of that stuff just leaving. When he was done, you know, years were going by, and you know, so I'm in the ministry, and I was, I was just like, there's something I'm still missing, or something more that I need to get. Okay. And then last year, I'm down at Pastor Greg's. Uh, you know, I'm ordained under Pastor Greg, and um, I uh, was listening to the Deliverance Conference, and this this gentleman, Pastor Henry Schaefer, was called up. Yeah. I'm like, I, I already knew who he was because I knew he's one that took Pastor Greg through. And I was like, well, this, okay, this could be interesting. Yeah. And the moment he started speaking, the Holy Spirit told me, you need to get with him. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> yeah, and so, and you went through your own deliverance. Yes. Um, but do you take other people through deliverance as well? Do you do deliverance on other people? Yes, we do all the time. Um, you know, we, as a matter of fact, there's a couple churches up in our area that send their people to us because... They're not really involved in it. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I always ask people, well, you know, your pastors don't take you through deliverance? Well, they don't really do that. Yeah. You know, which I, you know, I always ask the question, well, why not? But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if they believe that, you know, you can go to another pastor and get delivered, why aren't they doing it? Or why don't they come and get taught? Um, there's just a lack of desire. And I think it, it, it also, you know, when we brought deliverance in our church, mm -hmm. um, we had um, we had a, we have a fairly small church. Um, when we were we were just starting because we, we was basically forced out of another church. I ended up resigning mm -hmm. um, because of deliverance. Mm -hmm. Walked away and started church in our house. Um, we got a building last um, fall, and from the time we started that building, I think we had maybe two or three people left that were there when we first started mm -hmm. because of deliverance. Mm -hmm. Because it, you know there. There's a lot of people afraid of it within the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they're afraid of being exposed. I think some of that, but I think a lot of it, they're afraid that they might not have the authority over the demon. And look, none, none of us do except for Christ. It's well, you him. know, it's, it, him. it's interesting that you say that because when you look at a lot of the movies, like The Exorcist, or yeah. or you look at Hollywood, and, and you see, it almost seems as if in the movies that the demons have more power than the light. But no, that's not true. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, it's so far from the truth. I mean, it's like you you look at that the authority that Jesus has given to us. Demons tremble when a man of God or a woman of God comes in the room that's filled with the Spirit and knows the authority that they have. You know, they tremble just like they would if Jesus walked in. They, they tremble when a pastor gets up there and preaches the word with the authority that Jesus gave them. Yeah. They, don't, they don't tremble when a pastor just gets up there and just teaches basically out of the Bible what they learned theologically in seminary. Right. And you know, so so it, it's got to be the power of the Holy Spirit that's enacted. Um, and so many churches are powerless because there's no Holy Spirit coming in. You know, matter of fact, I'd say some. There's a lot of churches in our area. That, you know, I think they should probably just take the word church off their sign because they're not being the church. Mm. And, and, and some are some are in parts. Yeah. You know, my my belief is this: um, it's either the full gospel or none of it. You know, I'm gonna follow the full gospel. And Jesus did deliverance, you know, and he's called us to it as well. Amen. So, you know, you've been doing deliverance for quite a while. Uh, yeah. Henry Schaefer brought you down to this conference yes. in Aiken, South Carolina. Are there any specific deliverance stories that kind of stick out to you where uh, something that just was like, wow? <laughs> uh, yeah, probably a couple. Um, we were taking a... a a female pastor from our area through deliverance. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and I were just, uh, you know, sitting there with her, taking her through deliverance. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's like she just began to screech 
in the middle of this deliverance. <laughs> All right, now this is pastor. Yeah. This isn't just like your average church girl. This, she is like um, somewhat of a, I mean, I guess they consider themselves as kind of apostolic type right. pastor and, you know, believes in this stuff. She was trying to do deliverance with people. Things weren't working. So she thought, well, she heard about us, came and went through deliverance. And I mean, this starts to screech. And I mean, it's a loud screech. And it begins to yell, she can't preach. She can't preach. And the spirit inside of her that's keeping her from trying to preach the, the full gospel. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so that was one of them. Um, another one, you know, I mean, this is early on, like, probably... I bet the first, within the first like 20 deliverances that we've done, um, this gentleman came in from another church, sent over because, you know, they said, we tried to do deliverance. Uh, and, and I got a message from this lady. I said, we just tried doing deliverance on Sunday night. Can you can you help with this? And I'm like, you know, I, I'm at church. I'm just, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. not much I can do while I'm at church. Uh, you know, bring them here or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, and then, then she said, well, can you do it tomorrow? And we already had a couple booked for the next day. I'm like, well, there's just no way. I said, send him over Tuesday. And he came in, pretty big guy, um, you know, former wrestler, football player, um, you know, about 6'2", and um, decently, you know, built. And he sits down in the chair, and uh, we said, we bind you in the name of Jesus to the chair. You're not to get out of that chair. Yeah. And he begins to, uh, we're going through the process. He begins to manifest, and he looks right at me. And I'm like, you know, we're like right literally across from each other. And he says, I would kill you if I weren't bound. Wow. And I'm like, yeah, the demonic's real. Um, you know, we've had all kinds of things. This is, um, you know, this, this past Sunday, we were at um, our church, Sunday night, normal Sunday night service. We don't, we don't like do a mass deliverance. Like I said, we're a smaller church. I prayed with a guy at this um, outreach that we do on Friday nights. And he ended up showing up to church, and um, he said, well, when you prayed for me Friday night, he says, um, I felt something in me, but it's still there. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. I said, well, you, you need to be set free. I said, you want to be free? He said, yes. I said, do you want to be free? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says, yes. And I said, you want to be free today? Yeah. He said, yes. And we began to cast out a spirit of perversion out of him. Spirit of pornography came out of him, and same thing. And I, I ended up putting oil just on on his forehead, and he began to screech, began to twist, began to you know he he was saying it doesn't want to go. <laughs> uh, it's going out of there tonight. Yeah, he he walked out of there free of that. When we get back um, from this weekend, we'll be doing a one on one with him, taking him through the whole deliverance process. I I don't want to just get one thing out. I want to get people clean and set free where they can operate in the kingdom. Wow, man. And so you've you've done deliverance on other people, but are you teaching other people how to do deliverance as well? Yes. Yeah, we have a team that we're raising up, but, you know, as Pastor Henry would say, we're building an army. In yeah. Ohio, we're building an army. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got a group of people. Everyone at our church, probably with the exception of maybe one person, has gone through deliverance, and out of that, most of them are helping with deliverance. So, you know, they'll start out either sitting with my wife or myself and uh, we'll, we'll, you know, they'll help out. We believe it uh, kind of like that mother bird pushes them out of the nest. Mm-hmm. We push them out of the nest fast. Mm-hmm. You went through deliverance? How about you sit on a, in on a deliverance? Yeah. Let's get you involved. Because yeah. what I found is if people sit too long, they get complacent. That's good. And that's with anything in the ministry. That's good. I mean, not just deliverance, but that's with evangelism. Yeah. You know, teach people people to evangelize you better be an evangelist yourself and you know and also work it out but take them with you yes so so get them off that ledge push them off and say hey, you need to learn to do this you know we'll do uh, you know a lot of times on wednesday nights i will do teaching on deliverance so you know we'll we'll do um, pretty much the same thing that you'd learn down here we just go through the book mm-hmm. go through pastor henry's manual um and we were doing um i think it it was probably actually a Sunday night that I did this one. Uh, there's a girl that comes in our church. Only a time she comes in is Sunday night. And um, I asked, I said, hey, can I have a volunteer? She's jumping up and down. And she's, she's a, I say girl, she's like 50 years old. Yeah. Um, and she comes up, and I say, you mind if I put this hat on you? And it was, you know, the octopus hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we put it on her head, and I began to 
you know, have my wife there at the bottom, and I'm just walking her through. You know, we're starting to call things out. Yeah. And she's like, really, like manifesting, getting some rid of some stuff. And uh, after she took that hat off, she says, I feel free. I feel God. free. You know, like, <laughs> you know there, there's nothing better than to hear somebody say, I feel free. Mm -hmm. That you know has been in chains. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, you know, why more people don't want this? Why more churches don't want this? Um, I think it's because of a lack of teaching. A lack of teaching, and one of the things that I heard somebody say one time that, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, yes. peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Yes. But keeping your dignity <laughs> is not a fruit of the Spirit. Yes. So, in other words, they, and, and, I, and, and, I, and I see that because people, you know, when they see people getting deliverance, yes. it doesn't always look clean. And sometimes there's. It can get a little, <laughs> a little, I kind of go wild, side. crazy, whatever it, you want to call it, it. It's kind of like a car doing 160 mile an hour down the road that goes right. sideways. Right. It, it can get crazy. It can look, uh, it looks messy in the church. Um, but, you know, you read the Bible, you see it all the time. Yeah. You know, Jesus walking down the street, it got messy at times. Mm -hmm. Going into the temple, Mark chapter one, going into the temple, it got messy. You know, uh, should it not be the same way with us? If we're truly ambassadors of Christ, should we not operate as he operates? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think a lot of times we hold back yeah, because of our dignity. We don't want to lose our dignity. Um, we're afraid of what other people think. You know, I, I am probably one of the most, um, how would you put it, controversial pastors in our area. Yeah. Because other pastors say, oh, this isn't how it works. Christians can't have a demon. Well, how do you answer that when somebody says, <laughs> when somebody says Christians can't have a new? Because this is what they say every time. Well, the Bible says that the light, uh, the light shines in the darkness, or that the light and yeah, yeah. the and the darkness can't be together, and so a Christian can't have a demon. I mean, how would you answer that? Well, well, first of all, I don't think that's what it says. Yeah. I, I think he, he, that that reference there is he, the Apostle Paul, but it's referring that it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say it can't be. Mm -hmm. So you can you can you can mix light and darkness. Mm -hmm. You know, you you can actually. You know, what, what's it do? You, if you have a, you, you hear a dimmer switch. Mm -hmm. You can dim the light. Mm -hmm. So you mix the darkness in, it becomes dim. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you see Christians that are only walking halfway in. Mm -hmm. they, they're walking, you know, in a very shallow. It's a dim relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I would say is, like, you know, you look at the deliverances in the Bible. Um, most of them started out with what? You, you look at, uh, you know, you go across. Uh, to the man in the Gadarenes that, that was um, demonized, um, you know, cut himself, you know, mm -hmm. he's a cutter, uh, you know, and um, he sees Jesus coming, he, he runs to him, falls down and worships. I would say he was a believer. Yeah. I um, mean, he, he was worshiping Jesus, probably worshiping Jesus more than believers today worship Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and I, you know, so I, I look at all these illustrations in the Bible, Mark chapter one, he was in the synagogue. He was a believer in God. And the, the demon recognized Jesus. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it's not that I, I, whether or not a believer can or can't. You know, um, if, if someone's sick, what do you do? You bring healing. Right. So, you know, if, if someone, um, you know, has a demon, what do you do? You bring deliverance. I don't generally ask the question, you know, is it a Christian or a non Christian until we get them right there in that room and then we, I want to make sure they're saved. Yeah. That's our very first step. Yeah. We kind of start out with repentance. Mm -hmm. You know, let's let's get them. If they're not saved, let's get them saved. Yeah. But let's get them delivered. Mm -hmm. You know, get them saved and delivered, and let's get them on a path where they're they're you know ready to go. You can actually put them right into the deliverance ministry at that point. Mm -hmm. Because when you go through deliverance and you know something left, you're sold out to deliverance. Mm -hmm. You're not going to walk back from it because now you know you know first firsthand that this thing came out of me. I mean, I'll, I'll share a story. It's like, you know, with Pastor Henry, look, I already knew um, that, uh, you know, I had things come out of me in the past. But when I came here, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, it was this room. I was sitting right here just watching another guy go through deliverance one day. That was on a Thursday. On, on the Friday, I'm over on the other side of the room going through deliverance with Pastor Henry doing it. Mm -hmm. Now that's a little intimidating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a little yeah. intimidating. You know, yeah, you know, because he'll, he'll he's you know, done this thing a time or two, yeah, right? And, and, and he'll, he'll look at you, you know, and he'll say, 
uh, you know, strong man, you ain't strong, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh. and, and you're like, oh. well, it, it gets your attention right off the bat. So I'm going through this and I watched a couple of them already. So we sat through deliverances, so knew how they played. And um, he, he looks at me and he's like, he's already gone through mind control. I know the next step. I pay attention to the details. I'm blind. I have to, I, I have to use my other senses. So I know, look, look, we're going to go, you know, unforgiveness, bitterness, stubbornness, mind control. Leviathan's the last thing. I know what he's doing. So and then he stops. He looks at me and says, what's your middle name? Mm -hmm. And my mind's geared, like, geared up like this. I'm like, wait a minute. That's not what you're supposed to be doing right now. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be calling Leviathan up and asking what the number is. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, so you switched gears on me now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it, it kind of made me a little bit mad because I'm like, okay, now, now something's, something's up. And um, I told him, he's Richard, and he, he looks up my whole entire name, the meaning of my name. Um, you look it up, Dwayne means dark. The, the middle name Richard means ruler. My last name means high places. Put it together. Dark ruler of high places, yeah. And he says, I bind you to that chair, Lucifer. And I knew it was real right then. <laughs> wow. I, I mean, you know, you, you know, you, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. But once you know it, you're not going to turn back from it. Yeah. You're going to want, oh, listen, same thing that went worked for me, I want it to work for other people. Okay. So I'm sold out to it. Amen. You know, in the process of these shows, and I know it goes a lot deeper, where there's, there's still more. <laughs> wow. Man. But we want the more. Yeah. You know, we want to see people set free. Yeah. Yeah. And once you see it, like you said, you can't go back. You so. cannot. You can't put that back in the box. It's just not going to fit. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to fit. Well, <laughs> Dwayne, I appreciate yes, uh, appreciate absolutely. talking to absolutely. you, brother. And uh, I bless you in the name of the Lord. And so if you're watching right now and you say, I want to do deliverance or I want to do evangelism or I, want, I feel like the Lord is calling me to do something and you've got all these excuses... Yeah. This man's blind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on. And he's a preacher and he's doing deliverance and he's speaking at conferences. So uh, God can use you as well. So God bless you. Yes. Amen.